In this nugget, you and I get to discuss and describe how we can integrate intrusion detection and or prevention into our data network. Let's begin. There are lots of potential attacks that might be coming into our network. For example, on our firewall, if we had permitted just the minimum requirements to allow the user Bob on the internet to access one of our web servers, is it possible that in Bob's communication with those web servers, he could be sending malicious content or malicious requests? And the answer is absolutely yes. And the follow-up question, would we want to know that that was happening and would we want to protect our web server against that malicious attack or malicious traffic that Bob the attacker is sending? And I think in most cases, the answer is yes. Now, vendors have come up with some really amazing solutions to help us identify and prevent those attacks from getting through our network. And one idea was this. For example, we could take one of these switch ports here on the switch, connect an IDS system to it, which is an acronym for Intrusion Detection System. And then we could train the switch to take all the traffic and replicate it or copy it over to that port. So now, in effect, this intrusion detection system gets to see all that traffic that is going to the web servers. And then this intrusion detection system can use a variety of methods to identify whether or not the traffic that's going to those web servers is malicious. For example, one of the methods is to use signatures. And these signatures are looking for telltale signs of specific attacks. So if vendor Y has 2,000 signatures, those signatures can be used to compare the traffic against in looking for an attack. We also might have an intrusion detection system looking for anomalies. And those anomalies could be based on what the normal traffic, for example, how much quantity and what types are normally present. And then all of a sudden there's a flood, which does not match the baseline. Or an anomaly could be based on the protocol itself. For example, maybe it's a HTTP request going up to this web server. By the way, HTTP is the language of love. When a web browser is talking to a web server, and maybe one of the requests that's being made isn't a valid HTTP request. And it could be the attacker trying to manipulate or take advantage of how the protocol is supposed to work by sending in a bogus command. So an intrusion detection system would have the ability, based on the methods implemented by the vendor for detecting those intrusions, and then sending up red flags. Now, the problem with an intrusion detection system is that by itself, it doesn't stop the attack from happening. It simply alerts us to the fact that there is an attack. And one of the reasons is that this intrusion detection system, once it's seen the traffic, that traffic is already on its way to the server. The IDS is just getting copies of it. So the acronym for a network-based intrusion detection system is simply IDS. And then somebody really smart in the R&D department said, you know what, let's do something more than just alert to the fact that there's an attack happening. Let's go ahead and prevent it from getting to its final destination. And that's called Network-Based Intrusion Prevention System, or IPS. And there's many ways this could be implemented. One way would be to disconnect the firewall from the switch. So this cable here, we'd have go over to our IPS device. And this IPS device could be either a physical appliance or it could be a virtual device running in a virtualized environment. And this IPS device would have two interfaces. Another interface would go up here as well. So now all the traffic between the firewall and the switch has to go through the IPS. So we could use the same methods for detecting the attack, whether signature-based, anomaly, protocol violation, etc. But this time, if the IPS sees the attack, it can say, wait a second, I think that's a bad idea. I'm not letting those packets continue and make it all the way up to the server. So effectively, we're stopping the attack right here at the IPS appliance and not allowing the attack to get to the server, hence the concept of intrusion prevention system. We're preventing the attack from making it all the way to its target. Now, I'd like you and I to put on our executive hats for a moment and imagine that you and I own this company and we're responsible for it. Now, if some vendor came in and said, hey, we'd like to give you an intrusion prevention system and it's free, what would we say? Well, first of all, we'd want to make sure it works and we're not being attacked by that device. But secondly, if it doesn't cost us any money, absolutely, we'd always want that. But of course, the reality and the challenge is that a device is going to cost money. In fact, a network-based intrusion detection system or an intrusion prevention system, depending on how it's implemented, could be in the tens of thousands of dollars. However, in our environment, let's say we have one web server. Let's say it's server number one. And we only really need to protect that one server. We don't need to protect an entire network of devices, just one server. Maybe we decide to do the intrusion detection slash prevention in software running on that server. And so if we have software that is acting as intrusion prevention or intrusion detection, 
running on just that server. We refer to that as a host-based intrusion detection slash prevention system. And the acronym is HIDS. So it really should be H-I-D-P-S, but how the heck are you going to pronounce that? So an intrusion detection slash prevention system that runs as software on a critical resource like a server is referred to as HIDS, host-based intrusion detection system. And if we take this concept of intrusion detection slash prevention one step further, why not integrate it in devices that are already in our network? For example, maybe we integrate the intrusion detection slash prevention system into an existing router. And many vendors have that functionality, or even better yet, why not integrate that function of the IDS slash IPS, depending on which way we want to go, inside of our unified threat management system. For example, Palo Alto and Checkpoint both have those features that you can purchase as integrated components of their firewall systems. And from an earlier nugget, we discussed that UTM stands for Unified Threat Management. And it's a really cool term that's used to identify a firewall that has a boatload of services. For example, besides just filtering of traffic, we could also add on top of that intrusion prevention or detection services as part of that same device on our network. In this nugget, we've identified the purpose of an intrusion detection or prevention system and how it could be implemented in our network. I appreciate you joining me for this nugget. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.